Uh, the chapter is number four. And the verses are seven through nine. And if you if you could and would, I would ask that you stand to your feet for the reading of the word. I'm going to read from the King James Version. You are free to follow along in whatever uh, version that you may have. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verses 7 through 9. All found. Say amen. amen. If you need a moment, say oh, hold on a little while longer. We hold it. We hold it. For some of us can find 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and the verse I, I, I just, I don't know about y'all but I just love good singing. A, a, a song has a way of touching you. Oh, it, it touched me. It, it has a way of touching me where mere words just just don't do it. When you put a melody to that thing, and, and and we got to get new equipment fooling with Philip. He about to bust all the speakers up in there. Uh, bust all the speakers. How now speaker left? Damn. Damn. Corinthians. Chapter 4. Beginning at verse number 7, you will find these words. But we have this treasure mm -hmm. yes. in earthen vessels that the excellency, excellency of the power may be of God and not us. Well, well, right. That's right. We are troubled on every side. Come on, come on. Yet not distressed. Mm -hmm. We are perplexed. But not in despair. That's right. That's right. Persecuted. Mm -hmm. But not forsaken. Talked up. Come on, come on. Yeah, yeah. Cast down. Come on. But not destroyed. That's right. While you are standing, and while I have your attention. Do me a favor, if you will, and turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Listen here. Listen. No, 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 listen to me. I said, say, neighbor. neighbor. One more time, neighbor. neighbor. The struggle, the struggle is, real. is real. One more time, neighbor. neighbor. I don't know about you, I don't know about you. but in my life, the struggle is real. You may have your seat. That is your subject this morning. The struggle is real. Anybody here today ever heard of an old time gospel group called uh, the Canton Spirits? Ah, uh, if you're familiar with them. They sang an old song called Struggling yeah. and Straining. Mm -hmm. yes, uh, if you're familiar with the song, yeah. the words go in part like this. The song says, I've been struggling yes. and I've been straining. Yes. And then he said, but I'm on my way home. Right. Y'all know the song? Yes. He said, I've been struggling. And I've been straining. That's right. But I'm on my way home. He said, a lot of things have happened to me in life. Sometimes life get hard. It cut just like a knife. That's right. I've been struggling. And I've been straining. But I'm on my way home. Is there anybody here in this assembly today? that can identify with the words of the song. Yeah. Is there anybody here in this group today yeah. Yeah. that understands that every now and then life yeah. becomes a struggle? Yeah. Yeah. I know today that God has blessed you yeah. with a fine job. 
I know today that God has blessed you with the finest car in the parking lot. I know today that God has blessed you with the best job that you could ever want to have. I know today that God has blessed you with a fine wife, fine husband, and fine children. I know today that God has blessed you with a fine bank account where you got decimals and zeros after the year. Y'all ain't want to talk. Some, some of y'all got commas in your bank account. Yeah, I know that God has blessed you, but is there anybody here to understand that sometimes life becomes a struggle? We, 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 we struggle sometimes. If you're going to be real about it, we might as well say amen and shame the devil. Time out for playing church. Time out for playing that uh, everything is all right all the time. But see, I, I, I want to remind you, I want to tell you about a story. Come on. And see if you can identify uh, with the story. Now, I told you before that, uh, did I tell you that I love you? And I told you that I loved you. Ah, the story says that, 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 that there was a man that came across this cocoon of what's called the Emperor Moth. Come on. Ah, and this man decided uh, to take the cocoon home because he wanted to watch this moth uh, emerge from the cocoon. And one day, as he was walking by, the man noticed that there was a small, tiny opening uh, in the cocoon. And so he pulled up a chair and he sat down and watched for several hours as the moth struggled to exit this cocoon. Uh, the man then decided that something is wrong. Uh, this man then pulled out his knife uh -oh. and he cut uh, the remaining bit of the cocoon which then allowed this moth to emerge uh, from this cocoon very easily. Uh, and then immediately this man noticed uh, that the body of this moth was large and swollen, but his wings were tiny and shriveled. The man then expected that in a couple of hours, uh, he waited till the after a while. Yeah, you know what you know what the after a while is. After a while. The man sat and waited with the anticipation that after a while the wings will spread out uh, into their natural beauty. But guess what, my friends? They never did. So instead of this moth becoming this creature free, uh, free to fly, uh, this moth spent the rest of its life dragging around a swollen body and swivel wings. What the man didn't know was that uh, the constricting of the cocoon uh, was, it was a struggle that was necessary to get through that tiny opening. This was, this was God's way of forcing fluid from the moth's body down into the wings right. of the moth within, you'll be able to get up and fly. All right. This man who thought he was having mercy uh, upon the moth and snipped the cocoon. Uh, in actuality, he uh, performed cruelty uh, to this moth because the fact of the matter is struggle sometimes is what we need. All right. Up. Right now. Come on, come on. We, 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 we don't like to struggle. Mm, mm. Yeah, anybody ever been in a struggle? Yeah. And and you 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 are exerting all the energy that you can uh, exert, and it just doesn't seem that you're ever going to get anywhere. Sometimes struggle is exactly what we need because it is through struggle that many of us discover our wings it is through struggle that many of us learn how to fly I don't know about you but I, I, some of us are going through life trying to figure out what this thing is all about uh, if you're honest with ourselves have you ever had a moment and you said what the world is going on here what is life all about? Come on. Uh, if you thought this morning that life is a picnic, mm -hmm. I stopped by to tell somebody you've been missing. You've been somebody I told you wrong. Right. I know tonight. Or I know today that you have been baptized for remission of your sins. I know today that you have given uh, submitted your will over 
uh, to God's will. I know today that you have you do the very best you can day in and day out, but every now and then life gets hard. Life is a struggle. Uh, it's a struggle uh, many times uh, from the time that we are born to the time that we leave. Come on. This old duster Somebody can't say amen right now. Come on. Ah, because you're in the middle of a struggle right now. Somebody came in here with all this good singing, and you were not able to lift your hands because right now you find yourself ah, in the struggle. Children, sometimes ah, the child is barely born, and at the point of life, ah, there was a struggle there between life and death right there ah, in the birth canal. That's why we always ask when a baby is born, we first want to know how is the baby? Yeah. All right, all right. So we realize that there was a point that there was a time right there in the birth canal that there was a, a, a struggle right there between life and death. So the first thing we asked about, how is the baby? And then we ask, uh, how is uh, the mother? All right. And then after this uh, infant uh, struggles to get out of the birth canal, this infant then uh, turns around and struggles to learn how to crawl. And then later in life, uh, this infant uh, struggles to walk. Uh, life begins at the very beginning as a struggle. Uh, some of us uh, uh, have good days. Yeah. Uh, anybody, anybody like a good day? Yeah. Come on, come on. I, I, like, I like good days. <laughs> or oh, a, a good day uh, where you, 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 you've been uh, uh, I remember in the old days, uh, I had gone my house, and, and Boogie would be knocked out. And, and, and it'd be three, four in the morning, and I, I get a whip or some bacon. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and back then, see, we, we don't have good bacon no more. Uh, but, but see, back then, when they had the bacon with the rind on it, y'all, 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 y'all. Anybody know about the bacon with the rind on it? You can, you can chew on the side of it. You, 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 you can chew on that bacon all day long and the rind. And, and you, you, you having a good day. You, you, you get to work, uh, you, you, you go outside, you got a car full of, uh, 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 tank full of gas. You, 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 you find your way to work, uh, did nobody cut you off? You just glide into work real easily. Yeah, I would say, man, because sometimes those folk on the road can make your good day all of a sudden turn bad. But I, I, I love myself to have a good day. And I, I learned to appreciate uh, the good days because uh, just like I have some good days, and then I have some days that are not so good. Uh, uh, in this life, we struggle and we strain. But we have to learn that we can win in the midst of our struggle. Amen. Amen. Uh, Paul said that we can win in the midst of our struggle because of the treasure that God has put in earthen vessels. Yeah. Bible tells me in 1 John chapter 4 and verse number 4 it says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Right. And then when you look at old Paul over when it, in the book of Romans chapter 8, uh, he says, what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Right. We have the indwelling presence of Almighty God. Paul said that we are troubled on every side. When I look to my left, there is trouble. Paul said when I look to my right, I find trouble. Paul said when I look ahead, I see trouble. And when I look behind me, I find trouble is right up behind me. Has anybody ever had, had a time where no matter where you look, no matter which way you turn, trouble was waiting on you? Yeah, right. Paul says that we are troubled on every side, but, oh, I, I love the but. 
But Paul said, we are troubled on every side, but we are not distressed. Because we still have hope. And our hope is in Jesus Christ. You know, and I, I learned uh, that uh, you don't have to always go looking for trouble. Because trouble has a way of finding you. All right. Uh, anybody ever read, experienced that? Uh, trouble will drive down your street, back up in your driveway, get out of the vehicle, walk right into your house, and sit down on your safety and don't have the courtesy to knock on your door. I'm trying to tell somebody that trouble has a way of finding you. Ah, the second thing I notice about trouble is that God does his best work in the midst of the trouble. Ah, it is all right. I like to call the roll and put a few people on the witness stand. Come here, Moses, and testify. I hear Moses say, preacher, I had a watery grave right in front of me. And I had Pharaoh closing in on me from behind. And then Moses said, God told me to stretch out my rod. And when I uh, and when I stretched out my rod, see that's some of our problem right there. Moses did what God told him to do. There are some things in our life right now God has told you what to do, when to do, how to do. But we want to do our own thing and don't want to blame God when things don't go our way. Moses said, God told me to stretch out my rod. And when I stretched out my rod, he came and he blew the wind across that watery grave and made a freeway right down uh, the middle of the sea. I stopped by to tell somebody today that God does some of his best work in the middle of the trouble. Yes, Come in, Hebrew boys, and testify. I hear the Hebrew boys say, well, Brown, our Nebuchadnezzar tossed us down into the fiery furnace. I don't know about anyone here tonight or today, but I have had some Nebuchadnezzars in my life. These are people who are quick to toss you uh, in the midst of the fires of life. Any fun that have Nebuchadnezzars of your life, uh, when they need help, they know how to find you, but as surely as tomorrow comes, and, and as surely as they get back on their feet, as surely as things begin to go their way, all of a sudden they forget uh, who helped them get where they're supposed to go, and they turn around and throw you in the fire. But what Nebuchadnezzar failed to realize is that Jesus is a present help uh, in the time of trouble. Uh, the Bible uh, is saying that he came and showed up uh, in the fiery furnace. He showed up in, a, in his firefighter suit. Uh, we got a firefighter over there. Uh, he came and showed up as a firefighter and took the flames out and turned the furnace into a fellowship hall. Oh, I'm trying to tell somebody that by testifying, God does uh, his best work uh, in the middle of the trouble. Somebody still don't see me. Well, come on here, Daniel, and testify. Daniel said, I, I hear, uh, well, well, Brown, they tossed me uh, into the lion's den because they didn't like the fact uh, that I'm a praying man. There's some people in your life that don't like the fact that you're doing the thing that God has told you to do the way God has told you to do it. There's some things of uh, people in your life that are hating on you for being obedient to God. He said that uh, they like the fact that I was a praying man. And every now and then I get back down on my knees. I lit up my window and I look up towards our, our Jerusalem way and I call on the God of Jerusalem. I got a question today. When trouble finds your way, who do you call on? I got a question today. When uh, We need to stop calling on Madam Ruby. We need to stop calling uh, on Miss Cleo. We need to stop calling on Dr. Phil. Sometimes we need to stop calling on one another. And every now and then we need to learn to fall down on our knees and lift up our eyes toward heaven and say, Lord, I thank you for being the God of my life. Lord, I know I'm not supposed to, I'm not, I'm not what I'm supposed to be, but Lord, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. Every now and then we need to learn to call on the name of the Lord. Daniel said they threw me in the lion's den, uh, but God then showed up as a lion tamer and put the lions on a 24 hour fast while I was there in the lion's den. Notice that God didn't take Daniel out 
of the lion's den. But God blessed Daniel right there in the lion's den, right in front of the lions, and God changed their whole demeanor to protect his child. I'm trying to tell somebody today, there's some people in your life that God will change their whole demeanor. If you just learn to call on him. I'm glad today that God does some of his best work uh, in the middle uh, of, it, uh, of our trouble. I would tell you about the water being turned into wine, but I don't want to bother y'all too much, so I'm going to move on from that and give you something else. The Bible says that there was a woman with an issue of blood, and the Bible says she had troubles, or she had issues 12 long years. Sick and tired, tired and sick. Uh, all some of you hate little folk in the church. They, uh, you act like every trouble you have is for an hour and a half. But some of us understand that trouble sometimes lasts for a little while. There's some things I struggled with last week. There's some things I struggled with in 2018. And I'm still struggling with in 2019. This might be my last sermon, uh, Tish. Tomorrow I'm going to tell the truth. Uh, uh, there's some things that I struggled with in 2018 that I'm still struggling with in 2019. There's some things that I struggled with on last week that I'm still struggling with as I stand before you today. And I might still struggle with it on tomorrow morning. But the Bible tells me that there was a woman with an issue of blood and she had an issue for 12 long years spent all that she had on her earthly doctors and none of them would do uh, any good but then one day she heard that Jesus was passing by and she said uh, if I could just press my way I need to know today is there anybody here that has ever had to press their way if I could just press yes. my way through the crowd and touch the hem of his garment, I know that I'll find exactly what I need in the hem yes. of his garment. Yes, I saw a commercial say it one time, said a little dad would do you. Ah, ah, with Jesus. Sometimes, boogie, I'm not full of the Holy Ghost. Sometimes I'm not full of what thus saith the Lord. But if I just press and I find my way to touch the hymn, if, if I could just get to the hymn, if, if I could just get me a little bit of Jesus, y'all ain't gonna talk to me today. That's all right. I talk to myself all the time. Matter of fact, let me have a self break. Self. Uh, these people, they don't want to listen to what the Lord has to say right now. But self, I want you to be encouraged and bring the word that the Lord has given you to bring. All right, self, we're going to do that. Preach, Brian. I believe I will. Let me get back to my lesson. The Bible says that uh, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know that I'll be all right. Sometimes we find ourselves in one of three places. When it comes when it comes to this thing called trouble, uh, either you find yourself going into trouble, you find yourself in the midst of trouble, or you find yourself coming out of trouble. And just in case some of you halo folk ain't never had a trouble in your life, I encourage you today to stay read up, prayed up, and suited up because as sure as the sun gonna rise tomorrow, trouble is headed your way. Paul said that we are troubled on every side, but we are not distressed because our hope is in Jesus Christ and him alone. And when we realize, what we have to realize is that in the midst of our struggle, we are not fighting to victory, but we're, we're rather we are fighting from victory. That is why Paul tells the church in Corinth, he said, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord, Jesus, Jesus the Christ. I stopped by this morning. If you have Jesus, I want to tell somebody that you have the victory. Yes, if you have Jesus this morning, I want somebody to know that, in fact, you are winning. Doesn't matter what it looks like. 
Because we know that the devil tries sometimes to make us suffer from temporary amnesia. Yeah, yeah. The devil, he will try to make you think that God has never done anything for you. Have you ever been there? Right. You ever had a pity party? Woe is me, God, why me? God, why you treat me the way that you are? God, why did you abandon me? I do the very best I can, but Lord, I need you. And it seems like you're not here right now. That devil will try to uh, have us suffer from temporary amnesia and convince us that God has never done anything for us. He will try to make you think that God has never brought you through anything. Has God ever, has God blessed you and yeah. brought you through something? Yeah. 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 Anybody got enough sense to think about their own raggedy life yeah. and see what God has brought you through? Yeah. 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 People yeah. talk about you, scandalize your name, but God is still good. Yeah. Amen. All the time. No, Make you think sometimes that God is not a bridge oh. over troubled water. But in fact, instead of having temporary amnesia, I'd rather take a trip down memory lane and remember the good things that God has done for me. Matter of fact, didn't the Bible say one time, man that is born of a woman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that in your Bible? Man that is born of a woman is of a fruitings and full of trouble. Why then do we, uh, if God has already told us that there's going to be trouble in our life sometime, why do we turn around and want to complain against God when trouble finds our doorstep? Oh, Lord, have mercy. Paul said, life, sometimes we struggle. What we have to do sometimes, we have to activate our faith. Sometimes when life happens, our faith gets dried up when we began to focus on the thing instead of focusing on the God of heaven. Our faith sometimes uh, can become dried up. Uh, there are some things that we have to learn to do yes. with God yes. when we say that we have faith. Right. The Bible says that Abel worship God by faith. Right. In the midst of your struggle, we have to learn how to worship God and still give him our very best. Somebody missed their shout point right there. Turn it back up a little bit, try to bring it to you this way. Sometimes when we're in the middle of our struggle, we have to learn to put aside that thing that we are going through. We have to learn to put aside that money issue. Put aside that problem issue. Uh, put aside that love issue. Put aside that forgiveness issue. Put aside that hatred issue. Put aside that relationship issue. Put that stuff aside and focus on the God of heaven. Right. Put it behind you, I say, and resist. The Bible says, if you resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Some of us want to cuddle with the devil. And then wonder why things don't go our way. You can't uh, cuddle and, 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 and spoon with the devil. Some of us are so comfortable in our own mess, we lay there and spoon with the devil. I don't get no help after that. I encourage myself. Sometimes we get so comfortable in our own mess, we lay there and spoon with the devil. I say amen if you don't say it for me. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that Enoch walked with God. We don't want to walk with God. We want to skip in and skip out. We want the benefit of walking with the Lord. In the old days, I, I don't mean no harm. This, I, I don't mean no harm. It, it, not nowadays. I, I don't. I don't know what the year was. I, I don't know what the year was. But but churn. Children. Kids. Listen, I'm 
I'm just that's an old boy from, from Buffalo Avenue. We got you. We got you. Buffalo Avenue. Over there we got churn. Alright, churn. I don't know when kids stop going outside to play. Yeah. <laughs> Boogie, we used to we used to go outside and play. It, it didn't matter. It was freezing cold outside. It didn't matter, Anthony. And that song was right here on your face. We wanted to go outside and play. Am I right about it? And then we used to go outside and play. And there's a thing that we call jump rope. Now, let me help some of the children right now. You don't know what jump rope is. Do you know what a rope is nowadays, church? You know what a rope is nowadays, church? We used to get on a rope. And somebody was standing on, we were standing, uh, whatever the distance apart, and long with the rope, whatever the rope is, uh, and we would turn the rope. We turn the rope. Come on, come on. Y'all don't want to. Y'all don't want to. I'm having a flashback. Uh, Philip, we would turn. You, you know how you know to jump rope? We would turn the rope. And then, uh, uh, well, the rope already turned. The rope already, and you're trying to find your way. So you can, you can get the time in the right. And so we'll stand there, we'll bob back and forth. And until we get the time in the other rope down. And as soon as we think, ah, we got the time in the other rope down, we jump in that thing. We, and now we're going to do all kinds of dancing now when we got the rope down. But we, 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 we want to treat God like he jump rope. We want to jump in and jump out. All right, all right. God said, no, you got to be there yeah. from the very beginning. Yeah. I got to know who you are. We got to spend time together. Yeah. Some of us, mm. the only God town we get is right here in this worship That's it. That's it. <laughs> we, 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 we. We still trying to learn. We 95 years old and don't know where you do that. Oh. If, 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 if I call if I call for the book of uh, of Obadiah, uh -huh. <laughs> if I call for Obadiah, how long will it take us to find the text? Some of us, not all of us, some of us. The point is, we got to spend time with God. Amen. Open your Bible during the week. Don't let this be the only Bible you get. Especially if you ain't coming to class. You shorten yourself and then wonder why. See, we can't, we can't wait till we get in trouble. That's right. 